Open your mouth. Spread your legs. Clear. Let's go. You already know what it is, your boy Pistol Pete, dog in the jaw, and today is that season four finale, and we got a special guest, which is my guy that I know for a long time. Um, his name is um, Alice Masonette. He was New York finest. Uh, he worked in the industry for a long time, held down a lot of you famous rappers. You know what I'm saying? And um, his story is amazing. Um, he also was worked on Rikers Island as a correctional officer. Had his Family there, all kind of shit was going on while he was there working. Uh, he's going to be sharing that with us as well. He was a correctional officer upstate New York. And with all that being said, enough with that. You guys, you already know, it's your boy Pistol P. Let's get right to it. Dog in the yard. <laughs> when you're in that Tampa Bay area, make sure you reach out to my boy Gus Torres, man. If you want anything that has to do with real estate, man, make sure you hit him up. You get the lowest prices and the finest houses, man. Trust me when I tell you. But don't forget to mention my name. You already know that Pistol P to get you that early discount. And that's my brother, man, Gus Torres. You already know, out in the Tampa Bay area. Make sure you hit him up, man. Sell, buy, invest, all that. Make sure you hit him up, man, because he focused with that out there. Tampa Bay, you already know, it's your boy Pistol, man. Get at me. What up, what up, what up, peoples? You already know it's your boy, Pistol Pete. Another edition of that dog in the yard. You already know. Today we got Alex in the building. Alex was an uh, ex-correctional officer on Raggers Island. And um, I felt the need, the importance of having him on, on the dog in the yard um, so he could give us a whole different perspective on, you know, the shit that he used to deal with and the things that goes on on Raggers Island. You know, just to enlighten all you guys that never been there, and um, shit like that, you know what I'm saying? So, welcome to the show, Alex. What's up, my brother? How you been, man? How's everything going? Thank you. Um, uh, um, so yeah, man. I wanted to, uh, like I said, I wanted to uh, have you on the show because um, you're very experienced. Um, I know you worked on Rikers Island. Um, I just want you to more or less, you know, for those people that know that, you know, they don't know you, whatever, where you actually from, you know, um, and, and what year. And um, you decided to go, you know, as a correction officer and what you did before that, you know, a little bit of yourself. Um, well, now that you said that, um, you know, I, I grew up in the Bronx, South Bronx. Okay. You know, back in the days, you know, it was totally different the way it is now. Mm. As a kid, I had two choices. Mm. Either be a good guy or a bad guy. Mm. reason why I say that is because when I was 10 years old, mm. you know, I wanted to be... Back in the days, we had gangs. We right. had with colors. It was the Savage Skulls and Nomads and all that. So <clears throat> one day I decided to make a jacket. I was 10 years old. And I wanted to just, you know, be, be a gangster. Mm -hmm. So I went up. My mom used to give me a note, go to the store, buy this, buy that. So one day I uh, took my jacket underneath my shirt. As soon as I turned the corner, I put it on, and I passed right by the gang. And they were like, you know, smacking me in the head, like, look at this kid, you know, he wants to be a gangster, you know. One of those things. So my way of thinking back when was to be a gangster, you know. I, I, I thought that was the, the trending thing. That was back the first thing days. on your mind. I'm 10 years old. Yeah. So um, I decided to break some windows in the backyard. Mm. So one day um, the cops were um, patrolling around. They gave us a chase. We broke some windows. They couldn't catch me. Mm. I was fast. The next next day, we decided to do the same thing to a different building. Because back back when, the buildings were connected, like Fox Street, Beck Street. Okay. You go in through Fox Street, you come out through uh, uh, Beck Street, oh, right through the basement. Okay. And we jump a fence, and we're gone. So we knew the you know, backyards and fire escapes and how to, you know, how to, you know, lose Get the cops. Away. So one day, like, I had uh, 
think I still remember the officer's name. His name was Paul. He worked in the four one in in Fort Apache, mm -hmm. and um, he gave foot chase on me, and um, I gave him I I, I gave him a chase. Mm -hmm. It happens that he fell, broke his leg. So his partner, like um, three weeks later, he caught the route that which way we take going through the fire escape, coming out through Beck. So they got one step ahead of us. So what they did was they went through Beck, they reversed, they had a patrol car. As I was sitting in front of the building, once I saw the cops coming, I turned around, tried to get into the building, the cop was there. Mm -hmm. And that's when he grabbed me and they gave me a beat down. And then uh, when, they, when they took me to my house, mm. my mother gave me another beatdown. Mm. She said, if the cops will bring you here, it's for good reason. Mm. And then back when, um, my, my dad, he was in the system. You okay. know? Yeah, my, my, my dad did 42 years in prison. Wow. So, you know, um, um, I have siblings. My brother is also a correction officer. Okay. My two sisters are doctors. Okay. So, you know, being that my father was on the other side of the fence, you know, we turned out to be pretty okay, man. Mm. But uh, if it wasn't for this cop that caught me, mm. because like uh, uh, two weeks later, he sees me sitting in the building, he gets out of the car, and I'm ready to run. And he's like, hey, I'm not here to lock you up or do anything. You know, I just want to talk to you. So, all right, I gave him the opportunity to talk. So he says, listen, I want, I want to take you across the street, which was uh, like uh, Interval. There's a pizza shop there. So he took me for pizza. Mm. So I had pizza. He was talking to me. He said, listen, in life, either you're going to be a good guy or a bad guy. Mm -hmm. You need to choose. Make a long story short. Um, in the academy, I'm in the academy. And it so happened that when I walked into the room, the sergeant there, what's that cop that gave me advice? What? Oh, that's just crazy. Huh? Yeah, because I recognized him. Mm -hmm. And then I said, I was that partner of yours. And he said, hey, how do you know his name? I said, his name is Paul. He broke his leg chasing me. He says, oh, so you that kid, huh? Wow. So it was just a coincidence, and God works in a mysterious way. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, I'm, I'm glad you turned out to be that good guy. And that was the story how I started going to law enforcement. Wow. But I um I started at the age of twenty. What a what year? Nineteen eighty five. Okay. I, I became a, actually a state correction also. Mm. I um four days after my birthday, they sent me to uh Harriman okay. for the academy. I had to stay there seven weeks. So back when I had a choice to become a state cop or a correction. But correction called me first. So I went up there for seven weeks. I graduated. And they start you up north, mm. meaning I started in Green Haven as a training OJT. And I did, uh, at, back when, they had um, uh, a female that they found. She's a correction officer. She was murdered and put in a dumpster. And at that time? At that time. So how you felt as coming in as a new jack? I, it was like, wow, even correction officers get killed. So it was one of those things. But it, it, it was kind of scary, man. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm from yeah, the Bronx, man. kid, I'm 20 years old, and I'm looking around, and I'm with the big boys. And um, I, I tell you, man, um, hearing those gates close for the first time, it put a ring to my ear. Mm -hmm. I was like, holy shit. And then all the yelling and screaming. And, you know, they, they know you're a new jack. That's what they call you, new jack. Hey, new jack. Yeah, we're going to break you in good. You know, you're walking through the halls, and you're like, oh, shit. So there was a harassing. Yeah, yeah, word, yeah. You start pumping a little Kool-Aid because, you know, yeah. you're like, oh, man, I got to. I, I got to. Like target for something. Exactly. And I'm like, you know what? I, I, I got to come here, do my job. But this is one day after another day after another day. We had, like, what we call a cycle. So I, I used to work like four days, off two days, then okay. the other week, work uh, three days, and then work, you know, be off like that. So it was a rotating wheel. Okay. So um, it, was, it was an experience. But at the same time, is the thing about it is as you're growing up, you, you start facing 
inmates that were your schoolmates during the time. Mm. And, you know, they recognized me, I recognized them. So that puts you in a, in a bad predicament as right. a correction officer. Mm. So um, it was, it was a, a, an experience for me. Yeah, but like, what, was, what was it, what was it like, you know, for the, for the inmates and you be placed in that situation, like how you, you know, how you dealt with it? Like? Well, it, it was kind of difficult because mm -hmm. they try not to talk to you, but they give you the eye or the head, like, yo, what's up? You know, like, I know you, but they don't want to say that because they don't want to get you in trouble. And you don't want to uh, um, really say, I know that inmate because they'll transfer you. Okay. You know what I mean? So if you just came into the facility, you just really want to, um, you know, get do your job, keep it going. Yeah. You, you just leave it alone. Yeah, you know, you know you're there, do your job, and you go home. Right. But the only thing with correction was um, you find out the hard way. You go in there to do eight hours, your mind is already set. Uh, as soon as I get out of here, I did a I did an early tour. I'm gonna go home, take my kids, my wife to the beach. Sure enough, they locked the gates. You ain't going nowhere. You're stuck. Mm -hmm. Your super uh, intendant will call you up and tell you, "Hey, listen, you're stuck. You gotta do another eight hours." Wow. So now, either you like it or not, you gotta do the eight hours because you can't leave. So this is all happening when you first started too. This is yeah. This is the beginning of your... Oh, yeah, it's, it's the beginning. Wow. So you just, so now you went from eight hours to 16 hours. 16 hours. So when you, you know, when, when you start analyzing things, you, you say to yourself, you know what? If I do 20 years, you divide that by three tours of eight hours, you're an inmate. You know, you, you're, you're there for seven years out of 20 years. You're doing about seven years' time, but the only thing is correctional officers go home. And inmates stay there all the way around, you know, three tours. Right. So that's the only difference on that aspect. Right. You know, um, but, you know, being, you know, an officer and being an inmate is totally different. You got your freedom and everything else. Yeah. But when you're in there, you are smelling what they smell. You're there dealing with headaches, issues, crimes. Also, um, you get into confrontations with them. You know, so it's not an easy job. So when you started, you started at at, at the uh, uh, um, in, in the uh, what in the county? Well, I start I started in uh, Green Haven, and then from Green Haven, um, they move you to different facilities. Okay. Um, Green Haven is is, is, a, is a state facility. Right? Yeah, it's a state facility. State census. Yes. Inmates. Inmates. I mean, right? that's yeah, that's the difference. You that's, know. that's like the big house. Yes, that's the, that's the big boy. They want to make that clear for, this, for, the, for the audience, right. you know, for them to know. Right. Okay, go ahead. So that facility is, is one of the facilities that, you know, you're doing time, heavy time. You know, because um, if, if you do a little crime in New York and it's under a year or up to a year, they don't send you up north. Mm -hmm. They keep you in Rikers Island. Right. Because Rikers Island has different buildings. Mm -hmm. They have for state. Uh, inmates, state inmates that have new cases. Mm -hmm. They got um, um, detox inmates. They have different buildings for different reasons. They right. have uh, infirmary in there. They have for individuals that are in PC. They also have the box. Which What's PC for the people that don't know? PC is protective custody. Okay. When you get there, you know, um, like if, you, if, if you're an inmate but you had law enforcement time, you can't just sign a waiver and want to go to GP, which is general population. By state law, they'll keep you there. Mm. And you, either you like it or not, you go to PC. Okay. Um, so you was in so you started in Green Haven. Yeah, I started in Green Haven. I was there. Like, what was that coming? To, I mean, coming to work and hearing the, the the sounds of the gates and, and screaming and the and, 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 and the realness and. And you know, and all these new things you start. How you know? How how you know? Did you did you did you gradually like got used to it? You know what I mean? Or or you was like it, every day was a new shock to you? Well, um, okay. Oh, uh, to answer that question is, um, when you're there, um, you know, I grew up in the streets. I know what's up. You know, through good and bad and everything else, but. Sometimes I used to visualize myself and say, put myself as an inmate. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, if I would have did a crime, I would have got caught. What would I did? 
Because I used to see things, I used to see inmates get cut up, killed, you know, beat up, you know. So it wasn't an easy day at, you know, at, at, at the schoolyard, you know. So or, every day or, you like, came into work since you since day one, you was really working. Like you, you got, you caught yourself, finding yourself in all kind of conflicts and like, what's all the well, things that you was dealing with at the beginning? Mentally, I prepare myself, you know. Mm-hmm. I know when I'm coming to work, yeah. I'm focused because at any given moment, you're in a confrontation or you got to break up a fight or you got to stop a crime. I mean, people do get raped there. Um, there's, you know, there's drugs that that are being sold there. Mm. Um, so there's a lot of things that happen in the city, in the street. It happens in Rikers Island. It happens in State Penitentiary. It's mm. just um, you don't see too much exchange of money. Mm. And the reason why I say that is because uh, inmates used to have money mm. in their pockets. Money, you know, um, so that's a contraband. You're not supposed to have cash money. Okay. But how how does the money get there? Mm. Either visitors or even officers. There's a lot of officers that got locked up for uh, for corruption. Mm. You know, they get paid. You know, um, so during your time, that you, during the time that you worked there, you seen. Officers get locked up and get in trouble. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know that that never changed. You know, oh. you know, you figure after one officer getting caught, someone that has the intention or has done in the past would say, "Hey, you know, I don't want to get caught because you're gonna do some time, and they want to show an example, so you're gonna do double time." Mm. So um, that's one of the things that you got to keep in the back of your mind. Um, you can't trust inmates, but you can't trust officers either mm. because, you know, it, 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 it's not a win-win situation. Mm. It, it's like you have to, like, be yourself, like, if you're in the street mm. and you're not working, mm. you know, you got to be on your feet, on your toes, thinking quick, you know, and, you know, have a general mind of, you know what, I'm here to do my job, you know, I want to come in and I want to go home. In one piece, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. It's, it's one of those things. But mentally, you gotta prepare yourself. I, you know, I prepare myself going over. I used to, I call it like uh, once I'm over the bridge, I'm a total different Alex. Okay, but in, um, uh, before we go over the bridge in Green Haven, when you start, so how long you was there working? Before? Well, in Green Haven, I had to stay there, so I rented what well, we have trailers. Okay, they were revolving trailers near the facility. So it's three tours, so it's three different officers that will share that bed. So this way I used to go home on my RDOs, which is day, you know, your, your, your rest days. Like, you know, you go home. Your day off. Your day off. So it's one of those things. So during that time, um, you know, either you use a phone and call your loved ones, and, you know, your family, and just let them know you're all right, you know. So it's one of those things, but I knew on my day off, my day off was coming up. That night, either I used to take an early start, depending on what to I work, head home. Mm. And then this way I can stretch out my days off. But mentally, it, it's straining mm. because you actually doing time. Mm. Because it's not a regular job, nine to five, you can get on the phone, go outside for air, and if you smoke, you go outside to smoke. Right. Or, you know... It's something that you're being forced to stay there, mm. and that can mess up your your your, your way of thinking, mm. you know, because you might get into a mood, you know. But now you're you're in a bad mood, but you're working with inmates, mm. and inmates so are not going home. Yeah, yeah, you make it dangerous for yourself, but you gotta watch yourself mm. because you got these guys that some of them are doing life; they have nothing to lose. So just because I have an argument over the phone with my wife or something, you know, now I'm like, you know, I have a different uh, uh, attitude. Mm. And then you might want something. I might tell you, listen, get off the phone mm. because, you know, inmates have a certain what, what they call clicks on the phone. Okay. You got two click, meaning you got like maybe 10 minutes or yeah. 20 minutes. Six minutes a piece. Yeah, whatever. you know, one of those. So... You got, you know, you got to give respect to get respect. Right. 
So you're not gonna just because you're in a bad mood, you're gonna say, Hey, listen, man, get off the fucking phone or such and such. You can't do that. You know what I mean? So what you have to say is, you know, you have to put things aside and you gotta talk to him in in a way to give respect to get respect back. Mm -hmm. You know, so I used to analyze on that and you know, I used to practice, you know, uh, that that. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I like in the streets. I, you know, I just don't approach people and just because I had a bad day, you know, yeah. I start talking down to them. No, I, everybody's different. Right. I I can only speak for myself. I used to give respect, you mm -hmm. know, but I also had a job to do. Mm -hmm. So if you're having a bad day, I would have to put myself in that situation and mm -hmm. tell you, listen, at the end of the day, I got to do my job. If you want to give me a hard time, at the end of the day, you have to do what I tell you what you have to do. You know, and you get confrontation because mm -hmm. some individuals don't really don't care. Some they want to test you. Yeah, I was you know gonna I mean? ask. That was my next question. That you know, you coming into uh, uh, New Jack, it, I know. You know, did you get tried? I mean, like, how was it? Oh, you absolutely, know? you get tried. Yes, what I'm saying. But you, it's, get... I, you know, back when, um, you know, I used to be like 167. Mm. You know, you got these guys 220, 230. Pumping, you know, <laughs> yo, new jack. Yeah, What's up? Another thing you gotta look at, um, especially where everything happens in the yard. You know, uh, a lot of things happens in the yard. Mm. When you first come in, you get what I call the shitty post. Mm. They throw you in the yard. Okay. They throw you in in details as a correction officer, where no one wants to work. Danger zone. Yeah, well, in prison, everything's dangerous, but mm -hmm. that's like where all the headaches are. Where all the shit is at. Everything happens in the yard. Okay. And then also uh, uh, running the phones. Mm -hmm. Because you got about two or 300 inmates want to use the phone. Mm -hmm. And your job is to give them their clicks. Mm -hmm. And, of course, after a while, you, you see how one inmate will run and take other inmates' clicks. On the phone, you got to step in on that, mm. or at least try to step in on that yeah. when, you, when you see the situation because right. maybe that individual want to use his phone. Mm. So either you, you want to be that state, that, that state correction officer to do everything by the book, or you want to use a little bit of common sense mm. and psychology. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I went and put another inmate... In, in a situation, like, let's say you take an extra two minutes on the next person behind you, right. on the clicks, right? Because now mm -hmm. the third person is saying, yo, I'm next. Mm -hmm. You use up his time, not my time. Right. And that's when you get a lot of confrontations on okay. the phones. So you as a correctional, you're running the phones, you would have to try to stop that. And you, you'll say, listen, my man, there's two clicks, you need to get off the phone. You know, you might get, you might get, you know, like, yeah, come on, come over here and make me and such and such. Mm. They try that on you because you're a new jack. Okay. You know, you're not going to go there and try to fight these guys because you, you're there by yourself. Right. You know, there ain't no such thing as, you know, your partner's there, you know, the CER team is there. So when you work in, what is it, is it a block or unit? Well, different jails are different, like like when, a max. When, yeah, when you first started, right? How was, I, that was a max. Yeah, I, I was in on one of the tiers. Okay. Yeah, it's just uh, cell yourself. phones, myself and my partner. But my partner is running the uh, the doors and 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 the floor. Okay. I'm there, running at one end of the jail, running the phones, because mm -hmm. they keep the phones at the other way at the end. Okay. So as the tier gets released. You're there monitoring the phones, and you got your timer. You look at it, all right, you got two minutes, mm. you get on the phone. But you got to use psychology, too. If you hear the guy crying on the phone because his father passed away, those are tough situations because mm -hmm. you got to get him off the phone. Okay. So you also got to give him and understand that he's going through a situation right now. This might escalate into a confrontation with him. Because okay. he wants to vent, right. and you're stopping that to give the other inmate mm. a minute. Okay. So those situations, I might allow another two minutes 
I might delay the line a little bit, but I use common sense. Because if you're going to go there and think you're going to, you know, be macho man and uh, I'm going to be uh, 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 stopping the clicks and go by strictly by the book, I got to use a little bit of common sense. Mm -hmm. And that's how a lot of COs get into confrontation. They get beat up. You know, they get physical. Do you see the con do you see Oh, absolutely. That? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in the beginning stages of you getting the job and you going to... Yo, as a new Jack, you seen shit like that. Before. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. How the fuck you felt about it? Were you well, scared? Well, I mean, you well, got, like, you worry? know, like, I, I'm, I, I was one of those guys that grew up in the Bronx, you know, and, you know, I wasn't really scared of fighting and and getting physical, right? Putting hands on on people, you know. But it's one of those things, you know, you really you're not there to fight, you know right. what I mean? But it was one of those things that you also got. Uh, uh, Get some kind of respect, you know. It's, it wasn't like a, 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 a person that becomes like a, a macho man, you know. You right. want to really, you know, um, say, listen, you know, demand uh, an inmate from doing something. Mm. You got to talk to him like you're talking to someone in the street. Right. So I avoided a lot of confrontations. Okay. You know what I mean? But then yet I wasn't one of those like, yo, that CEO, he let you do whatever you want. No, I want you to respect me mm. and know that he's cool, but he has his limits. Right. You know what I mean? You don't want to give a, 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 a kind of profile mm. that, oh, you allow anything to happen because that's what the inmate wants. Okay. You know, I used to keep it into a limit, but enough that I can get the inmate's trust. Right. And, and you can, can I say... Um, the liking of, right. uh, of a friend, you know, like you're not, you know, you're, we're not pals, but I it, want to respect it's mutual respect. Exactly. So you gain that kind of respect from them, you know, like he's cool, right? But I would never do it like a favor, right? I understand. You know what I mean? Because but you was never put in the position in the position when you seen a CEO getting beat up or got disrespected or you know, you, you obviously you know CEOs got to stick together. Oh, absolutely. No, so, when we when we had that. You know, you had to secure your post and secure your inmates and then go there and assist the, the other officer. So, so, not to cut you off, but did, did that ever occur when you first started or when you moved on later on in your career? Uh, all, all, through, all through my career, it happened, but in as the beginning a new Jack, at the end. Yeah, that, that never stops. Okay. You know, um, I'm talking about in the 80s. Right. You know, um, Jails started not changing that it's not more. Going, not, not that it's not going on now, because it's still going on. Yeah. yeah. Whether the 80s and 90s, they still popping over each other. You know, it all depends, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, it, you know, I, I got to say in the 80s and 90s, Rikers was really jumping. You know. It's tough. Yeah. I, I, I mean, upstate is always going to be the same upstate. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, you get serious crime up there. You know, um... Upstate is like a place that you really don't want to be. You know what I mean? Because those are the big boys. I call it the big boys because yeah. all you do there is try to do your time and inmates that do um, heavy time, uh, 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 what they call clicks, you know, mm -hmm. um, they got nothing to lose, you mm -hmm. know. And these people, they, they lose their kids, your loved ones, and you can't go home. And be with them, you know. Um, at times, yeah, they do uh, give you like a, a like a funeral day. We used to do runs, bring them to the city or whatever their yeah their family live, and that was given to the inmates, you know. But inmates had to fight for all that, you know, for their rights. This is all upstate. This is upstate. Okay. And a lot a lot of their rules coincide in the city, okay. but the only difference between the city is. You are detained. You're not really uh, convicted yet, unless you're an inmate from the state and you go for a new case or uh, another case that was pending, and you go back to Rikers Island. Okay. So my, the the most uh, I gotta say is upstate. While I was there, I I, I experienced officers getting you know cut. Um, upstate, upstate, yeah. So you was, so you was ever, were you ever like placed in a situation where a, a, a 
CEO got cut or beat up and I mean you was there like what, what Well yeah I, I mean you you there I upstate you don't see too much of that okay. upstate we used to walk around with a stick you know uh uh baton, uh, baton. baton. so um when things used to break out like it's like uh 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 in the yard okay you got 15 inmates going at it and if the officer gets in the, in the way or sometimes they had a, a diversion of, of, of a fight, but they really want the officer to get in there hmm. because you're, you're, you're being target or you, you was a contract and they want to take you out hmm. or beat you up or, you know, stab you up or, yeah. or get on you. So you always got to use knowledge as a, court, uh, as a, a correction officer and say, don't put yourself in that predicament. Don't mm. be too quick to react. Mm. You know, the you know, we had we had a way of thinking like we have to walk, use the wall mm. so we don't get hit from behind. Okay. And mind you that there's weights there, dumbbells, mm. you know, uh, the weight plates. So they have weapons. You have your 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 baton. In some situations, we didn't want 15 inmates to take my baton. Mm. So in a situation, we used to take the baton and throw it over the wall. I'd rather catch punches and kicks than you hitting me with my own baton. Okay. So those are heavy uh, 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 situations that were very physical with 15, because you are numbered. Right. So you got 15 inmates on one officer. So you're not going to involve a baton. Especially, like, we have females, too. Okay. These females were 116 pounds, and you're, you're trying to break up two guys that weigh 220, and they're aggressive. Mm. Now, they're going to take her baton and use that baton on me. Right, I understand. So we had a rule for a situation like that. We threw our baton over, over, over the gate, over the wall. So at least they won't use that against you. Exactly. Okay. And we try to move away from where the weights are at. But, you know, those situations, they used to tell us the best thing to do is just keep your eye open. Two inmates are fighting. Don't try to break them up. Mm. Only when the response team, we, had, we used to call it the CERT team. Okay. They used to come with hats and bats. Okay. Once they come, that's when you try to break up the fight with okay. inmates. Okay. You by yourself, you don't do that because, like I said, it's conversion. It could, turn, it, it could change. To, to it, you. it would change, or it was probably a trick to get you there. Okay. Now they throw you in the bottom of the pile, and they're stabbing you up, uh, beating you up, and hitting you with your own baton. Okay. So there was a lot of things that we used to, uh, or, you know, Practice. do our own training. Mm. You know what I mean? And yeah. we should talk as officers to officers, what we should we do okay. on situations like that. Okay. So, you know... You know, it's, it, it, it becomes like a family as mm. correction officers. Okay. You know, and you see a lot of correction officers like when they're talking down to inmates. Right. You know, um, I used, just to avoid things, I used to uh, change my tour and not work with that individual and put myself in that predicament. Okay. You know, um, did I see a, a corruption? Did I see discrimination? This is all happening when you, was, when you first started? When I first started. Okay. Yeah. How long you worked there? I, I, I worked in Green uh, Haven three months, and then I got moved. I went to Elmira. I went. I worked you in a different facility. Yeah, Elmira. And how was that? Oh, uh, those are young boys. Because Elmira is worse yeah. than Green Haven. Yeah, but that, that's that's that you, you got the young boys there. Yeah, no, Elmira. I was, a, I was yeah, in Elmira yeah. before. Oh, okay, yeah. So that's a different speed. No, it's yeah. way faster speed. Yeah, man. it's totally different. He was know? getting banged out of there. Oh, every absolutely. Day. So yeah. how was that for you going from Green Haven that? We even is, you know, is a penitentiary, but it's a more laid back. People respect each other more. Yeah, because you know, you're more more of an adult, adult now. That's what, that's and, what I'm and, saying. You know, you, you life sentence. Right. Or uh, uh, Amira wasn't like that. No. Nah. That's more like a detainee, but state detainee. Yeah. You know, um, like um, I used to call it like gladiators. You yeah. Know, so you basically gladiator. gladiator school. Yeah. So um, it was a fast pace. You know, you're dealing with more young guys. Mm. That's like NFL. I can compare NFL and college. Okay. College is real fast. Mm. So I consider them that type of okay. individuals. But more incidents. Mm -hmm. 
you know, you had more, you know, I guess they want to challenge each other and their beef that they had in the city. They caught up with them upstate. So what were the, what were the, what, what one of the worst things that you ever probably seen while you was up there on the Myra or in the state before you, before um, you got transferred to? Yeah, in the, in the state, um, I got to say, um, in fish kill, fish kill, there was two incidents that two individuals, you know, got killed. Oh, wow. You know, yeah. One was, um, um, inside the, uh, like, like, like the cell okay. area. They had a individual that got locked in and they burned him alive. Wow. So he couldn't get out. Um, that was like the heaviest thing. And then, you know, this guy got stabbed up about six or seven times, you know, during my, my shift, mm. you know, and you know, that to me, it was a lot of paperwork. Um, yeah. that was something that you really don't want it in your presence. Yeah. And besides you dealing with that, that pressure of dealing with that every day when you go to work, you know, knowing that you have to prepare yourself mentally, did you also experience any kind of like racist stuff? Because I know that upstate, you don't see too many Spanish blacks. You know, you might see them in Great Green Haven, yeah, a little bit, but like Elmira, it changes. Yes. You know, it's more, you know, uh, Caucasian, you know, white. I mean, how was that? You going in there and you, well, you know, you're Spanish, but you look black. You know right, exactly. So, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I used to portray to be just black. Okay. So you can hear the Spanish people, inmates, or even officers talking about you. Thinking you're black, they they they, uh, they they didn't see that you was Hispanic and you understand the language. Yeah. So that used to work, you know, on my favor, mm -hmm. you know. But um, now that you said that, I want I also worked in Clinton. I was in Clinton, and the reason why I said that was that was for two weeks, two weeks, because every day I was on the phone trying to get a a a, a transfer. It was real hard for you. I tell you, um. Where we see at the time, you know, when you're a uh, correction officer, you don't have to um, have a gun. You know what I mean? Off duty. We used to call it off service revolver. Back when, um, unless you want one, because you got to leave it in the locker before you go in. You can't go in with a pistol or a gun or anything okay. like that. But when you go home, and I, you know, I, I, this gentleman that worked there, he was half black, half um, white. And um, he said, you know, Alex, um, I advise you to get an off-duty weapon. And I kept asking him why. He didn't want to tell me. Mm -hmm. So one day uh, I'm there, and this is in two weeks period of time. Um, one of the co uh, correction officers we heard that got beat up going to a car after work. Mm -hmm. And I said, wait a minute. Couldn't have been an inmate because this happened outside. And it was an uh, individual. Um, he was Hispanic. Um, but he looked white. I never thought he was Spanish or anything like that. He was beat up pretty bad. Mm. And it was what uh, I was told. He was uh, uh, beat up by correction officers. Wow. It, it, it's what they call a blanket party. Okay. Because you had to be scared of that. And that's why you needed your off-duty to protect yourself from state correction officers. Wow. Because that's how white it was. Let me tell you something, now that, that, that I'm on that subject, um, when I went to the academy, first day, not even an That's hour, crazy. I walk in, so the instructor that is putting me in the dorm, because he used to stay over. Right. So I'm in the academy, and then I'm there because I got there first. My roommate walks in, a white kid, walks in. Before I even say, hey, my name is Brian, he put his hand in my face and touched it, like touched my skin like this. My first reaction was right in front of the instructor. I punched him in his face. What? And I said, yo, my man. And he's like, oh, oh I'm so sorry. Is that I never yeah. seen a black person in person. This kid was from Buffalo. Wonder why. From I don't know what town, yeah. but... He never saw a black person. I, I, was, I was shocked. Uh, My instructor looked at it, and he, 
he didn't even put nothing on paper. Mm. You know, he apologized and such and such. So I'm like, I'm not gonna have a man just touch my face like that. Like, <laughs> he was like, like what, what are you thinking? Fun? You know, like yeah. I was like, this is my first day in the academy. I said, mm. oh, there's gonna be problems here. Mm. But anyway, that two weeks after that, he invites me. He goes, I want you to come to my house on your days off and spend it with us. I said, listen, no, no, no disrespect, man. But I'm not going to be one of those uh, victims <laughs> that I'm going to go to your town where you, you never see a black person and you want to have a trophy and you want to take me to your people in your town. I'm not doing that. Yeah, you was like, nah, I'm good. I'm not missing. I'm right. going home. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's to show you mm. that there wasn't a lot of... Uh, 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 Hispanics or black individuals were no in Clinton. The no, and officers don't talk to you. Mm. Over there, they with the stick, you hit the wall, you go, you you you, you hit twice on the wall. It's just stop. You know, it, it's one of those things. Officers don't even talk to officers. Mm. Okay, and never mind a, a white officer talking to a black officer. You're not gonna see that. Okay, so I didn't feel safe. Mm. So they brought me down, and that's when I went to fish kill, and I worked my way down. I went to Downstate, and Downstate, I experienced something that I thought I would never experience in my life. Mm. I'm working in the port. They, they want you to work every part of the facility in Downstate. Downstate okay. is an intake facility okay. to get registered. They give you your greens. They give you your cockies. You know, so you got get all... Get your hair cut. Yeah, so, you know, you're, from there, you're going to get transported. You might stay there maybe three weeks, but they keep it moving. You know, certain uh, um, classified inmates would stay there. Okay. So I'm working the port, and I'm, I'm seeing inmates coming down on, on, off the bus. And as I'm looking, I'm seeing this man, and I'm like, I know that guy with glasses. That was my dad. Wow. Yeah. I know you was already in the system as a correction officer. Um, I had maybe um, nine months okay. at that, and so you once still, I saw that- it, You were still on the probation and all that? Man, I, yeah, of course, um, but it was one of those things that I really didn't want to approach him, and I wasn't too sure if that was him, but I said, I didn't, I didn't see my dad, I was around 10, 11, around there when I saw my dad. Okay. And nine, you know, so I did do a drastic change, but he, I was seeing him. He wasn't really looking around. But my my my, uh, my heart dropped, you know. And I see him in shackles, getting off. And I'm trying to look to see where they, they was going to place him. Because I wanted to, you know, go and say hello and talk to him. I said, listen, I'm your son. I don't know if you remember me, but he hasn't seen me since I was 11. Uh, 10, 10 years later, like, almost 11 years later. Mm -hmm. So I I, uh, I called up my brother. Because he was working in Rikers Island mm. during that time. And I said, could you look him in the system, see if this is really him? So that's what my brother did. He said, yeah, that's dad. Mm. He was being transported. Wow. He just left Rikers Island. So I said, wow. I said, I got him here. He says, all right, you know, keep it to yourself. And I kept it to myself. You know, I didn't say much. Yeah. But I got to see him. I found out where he was. I snuck myself there as I was changing my tour. I stopped by and I told him, I said, yeah, it's me, your son. And he says, wow. He goes, man. He goes, you know, I won't say nothing because I would have got transferred or he would have got transferred. Right. So I'm only now like almost shy of three hours away from home. So I thought I was going to be staying in that facility because it's a good facility to work in. Okay. You know what I mean? Because it's a, a processing place. It's, it's, it's easier. Right. Then inmates, you know, uh, 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 you working in, in this kind of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So I say, you know, I would like this to be my permanent facility. But um, I put in for other uh, a facility, which was Sing Sing at the time. I'm only 40 minutes from home. And that transfer never came through. So um, one day uh, I said, you know what? I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna continue my transfers. I want I want to get to Sing Sing. So make a long story short, I went into uh, 
Sing Sing at the time. I got the transfer, and in Sing Sing, totally different. You know, I remember I worked uh, J, uh, JNN, uh, uh, what we call uh, galleries. Okay. Um, so there you're dealing with 25 to life. And they also had different buildings in there, which it was the uh, Pearl, I used to call it the Pearl Handle, which it was building seven in Sing Sing. And there it was a lot of, a lot of knives, a lot of shanks. They used to, you know, have a lot of cut-ups. And um, there, as you're not a rookie, but you're in between now because now it's a, l a little over a year. Um, I used to work the phones there because I'm the new coming officer there, yeah, so yeah. they used to give me the shitty post. Okay. And I already had my routine. Mm. So I developed my own system to make my job easier. Mm. So um, I use psychology, you know. I'm there in presence, but I used to visualize who ran that gallery mm. where I worked at. Okay. And I used to analyze it like, you know what? Why should I go and stress myself to run a phone? So as you're there, you develop your own system to make your job easier. Okay. So if I knew that Big Smith over here mm. ran the gallery, mm. right, the inmate, so... I used to give him extra clicks on the phone or if he's running that, like the, cause he got jobs there. Mm. You know, um, if you run, run the floor, you do the mopping or you work in the library, you get paid, right. but you get paid through um, commissary. Okay. They, they put money in your account. Mm. So what you do is you give them extra overtime, mm. but you let them run the phones. Yeah, the state wants you to run the phones, but physically, I'm going to let Big, Big Smith run the phones. Okay. Because they're not going to give him a hard time. Okay, I got you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if you want to get gangster, you're going to be with, with the other gangster. Yeah. I'm not there to be gangster. I'm there to run the, the gallery. Right. As an officer. I'm, do, I'm doing my job, but I'm using psychology mm -hmm. to run the phones even more smooth now. Right. Because if you're going to have a problem, you're going to have a problem with Big Smith over there. Yeah, you're going to let them run it yourself. And let it run it yourself. And that, uh, to me, it worked for me. Okay. You know what I mean? It might not work for every officer, but you got to do that and develop your style of how you're going to run to get respect. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how I made my time a little easier. So, when, so when, at, at what point, after being a correctional officer, you just... You went to Rikers Island. When, what year you ended up well, at, at Rikers Island? Uh, I went to Rikers Island in '87. And before you moved, you you got to Rikers Island in '87. Yeah, in '87. Did you ever get into any altercation prior to that? In any in any, in any with, with inmates, bars, well, fight or broke up a fight where you got or you know something happened or like you um, know do or or it was it was pretty smooth until. I tell you, uh, I, 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 I was blessed in state corrections. Um, other than me using my hand on another officer when he saw me and touched my face, yeah. I didn't have to use my hands upstate. I was one of the lucky ones. You know, I never had to use that because, like I said, I developed my own psychology to deal with the inmates. Yeah, your, own, your own system. And shit yeah, like because yeah. why go through that? Mm. You know what I mean? And then yet you get the same respect. As an officer, I'm doing my job. You know, I'm not doing nothing corrupted. Mm -hmm. I'm just using psychology. Okay. So it's not costing me money. It's costing the state money because he's working overtime. Yeah. So he's getting more clicks on the phone. You understand? Mm -hmm. um, Plus he's getting a little six, six pennies. Yeah, six cents it, a day, it, whatever uh, more it of over, overtime because they yeah. had a cap too. Right. So you couldn't exceed like, like $50. Okay. So, you know... So that was a, a blessing for them because a lot of them work there and they don't touch a dime. If they keep $10 in commissary out of the 50 they make, they send that 40 home. Mm -hmm. In a month, weeks of four weeks, that's $200 that you're sending back home. Mm -hmm. And that's how they, they support their family. Okay. You know, some inmates are more blessed than others. Right. They have money, so they don't worry about that. But they work just to have a distraction of, 
of another eight hours in, yeah, in jail. I got you. To make time, you know, move a little quicker. So a lot of a lot of different inmates had and used to use their system, either work or not work, so they can just have time in their hands and go and, and it, it passes a little quicker. But I was I was like, you know what? Now is my move. Uh salary wise, and I'm in the city where I live. So I was like, hey, I'm going to Rikers Island. Before you moved to Rikers Island, did you get a chance to speak to your dad? How was that? Like, yeah, no. I, well, I spoke to him before I got transferred. That's what I'm saying. How yeah, because I it, it it was like you know I you know I told him you know he was very shocked that I I I, I became a correction officer, mm. and then he was very proud of me because now I'm on the other side. Like he didn't want. He was ashamed that I saw him in jail. Mm. How many how many kids? Growing up would say, you know what, in, in 10, 12 years from now, I'm going to be a correction officer. And I'm going to be detaining and supervising my dad now. Mm. He's doing time. Mm. You know, that's, I, I don't wish that on, on my worst enemy, mm. to see your loved one doing time. And then yet, you're there, and it, it was, you know, I, I was lucky that he was an assigned to my dorm because... If he's a, he's assigned to my station, I don't have no choice but to deal with it, yeah. because I have to say prepare myself mentally, right. and I know he wasn't gonna put me in a situation like, hey, you know, bring me some marijuana and bring me this and bring me that. Right. Never put me in that kind of predicament. Okay, you know, any chance that I got to see him for those, for those months that I was there, it was blessing because I knew he was well. Right. Um. And I just didn't want to see. Did you place him like in a good job? Did you try to get him like hooked uh, up? Well, I didn't want to make it because my last name is not too common. Yeah. So, um, and his features kind of match my features. So I kind of kept it. You didn't play it close. It, it, you know, you know, kind of, kind of distant. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But just check up on him, make sure he's all right, or speak to the officer. Um, I had two good friends there in, in the little time that I was there that I said I, that was my uncle to keep it on the hush-hush. And they did. They looked out, you know. Okay. You know, he got extra clicks, yeah, an extra yeah. sandwich, you know. Right. Extra piece of know, chicken or yeah, something. Yeah, and they also got, um, he, he started um, moving books in the library. Hmm. So he got a job, you know. So it was, you know, was kind of easier for him. And then when I had to leave, they still in contact with me until he was there. And then he went, he went up uh, north. You know, so um, in '86 you went to Rikers Island. Yeah, so I know I went to Rikers Island in '87. Uh, '87. Yeah, so I only did like wow, two years 87? in state. '87. Yeah, in '87. Damn, yeah. man, I was there. Yeah, '87. Yeah, there well, that, well this is this is some 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 crazy, some, uh, some crazy shit because I remember, and you gotta remember this in 2008. They were filming a film. Uh, it's called. Um, with the bone thugs, uh, I tried. Right. So, think about this one. You was on the other side of the, of the trailer. Right. So you was talking about some Fifi rags, saying some stories, and right. then saying some story about right designer when the riot, and you was in one of the dorms. Right. So, I let them. I I I I let you speak, man, because you was saying mm -hmm. this, that, that, and then I waited. That's when I I, I kind of. Called you over, mm -hmm. and I introduced myself. I say, hey, so, so. I say, yeah, because of you, um, I got caught. I was one of the hostages mm -hmm. um, that was taken in the dorms. Okay. Um, and then you started laughing and said, "Yo, <laughs> man, you know, it's just respect and all that." So it was one of those <laughs> things that, yeah, I, I got caught in that riot, man. Um, what happened was I, I was in the mess hall. I was working the mess hall. Okay. Um, 87. In 87. I, I actually, going into 88. Yeah, going to 88. Because this, this happened... Um, I was about to tell you that. Yeah, that, 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 that happened going into 88. Um, it was one of the biggest riots in Rikers Island. Um, I believe like 20, 36 inmates were hurt. Mm. Um, 12 officers were injured. My, my superior uh, uh, got stabbed and almost died. Yeah, yeah, my lieutenant. Um, he um, he he went in with me and my partner.
because the mess hall was right next to the dorms. So we were the first one to respond. And when we went in there, it was empty. We went to one, uh, the lower level. All right. So when we walked in there, it's supposed to house 50 inmates. And it was there was no one, it was no one there. The flats. Exactly. Everybody was in two. Okay. So now there's a hundred. All the correction officers, because they had two, one inside and one to walk the floor. They were all tied up. So when we went there, everybody from the dorms started walking and cornered us. Mm -hmm. So now it's myself, my, my, my supervisor. My supervisor was a captain. It's like in PD, they call them sergeants. Okay. But he was my captain. In upstate, they call them sergeants okay. in different ranks. So we were cornered. And like 200 inmates started throwing soap, shit, bottles. They had shanks. So we were cornered. So um, I, I was in a mess, so I had a chain with all the keys. So I was able to grab one of the inmates and through his neck and put him as a shield. Right. So we were there for a good 15, 20 minutes before the 13th was able to come and gas everybody up. And come in. Join, join that. Um, I remember they always said you can't bring knives in. I was one of those officers, like I say, you know what? I'd rather, I, I rather be in trial with 12 than be carried by six. Mm. I used to walk around with a, a butcher knife in my boot. And thank God I had that because it, it was a big knife, a, a hunter's knife. Okay. And kept a lot of the inmates. Away. away. And plus I had the shield, I had the chain around the inmate's neck. And my partner, you know, he uh, he got the worst of it because he was on the outside of it. Because, mm. uh, you know, I only can block so much. My supervisor was on my left. They shanked him. And they went through my jacket and got him. He almost died. He almost caught his, his liver. Wow. So um, they came in, they gassed everybody up and all that. And the inmate that had the chain around his neck, he almost died. Mm. Um, but that was the biggest riot. Yeah, it was the biggest. It was riot. the biggest riot, you know. And after that, um, you know, I um, I and this is eighty nine, going into eighty nine. Um, I said, you know what? Um, I never want to put myself in a predicament like that. Mm. Now I start hating the job, right? Because, like, my life went right. Right by my my own eyes, like I, I was like, yeah, you face cut, you almost face death because yeah, you got that, caught up in the riot. Like it could have been really wrong. I was shit on. I, I was I was bleeding from the inside for wow. three months. I was line of duty. So what I did was, um, I, uh, I mean, I was so lucky and fortunate that the uh, New York City Police Department called me. So I was out sick for those three months. And then the police department called me mm. to become a, a police officer. Mm. And so how I, long you was on Rikers Island? I was in Rikers Island uh, two years. Oh, two years. Two years to eighty nine. Two years, a lot of shit happened. Though. Oh yeah, no, it, it went a lot, and I, I was so uh, fortunate that because um, I was very active in Rikers Island. Okay. Rikers Island. The reason why I say that was now Rikers Island. You know how it is. These young bucks and all the everybody there is a detainee. Mm -hmm. So until proven guilty, you're there. Yeah, it's a zoo. Yeah, you know, and you know, you you're not in greens unless you're an inmate that came from the state and you're there holding you for for court for another case or something. Yeah, so right. it was one of those things, and forget about it. I was I worked in one of the the worst jails in, in Rikers Island. I went to C ninety five. C95 is the biggest building, and it was like the craziest because we used to hold, uh, uh, which was part of 70, 71, okay. was the, the infirmary. Yeah. They had a lot of AIDS uh, inmates, mm. patients there. And then it, it, that building was huge. It held uh, it like 2,300 all, all the drug Mentally ill, uh, rehab. For detox, we had you know the detox program, yeah. and we had all the state prisoners. They used to come down for the case. How was how you dealt with the mental health, man? How was you know? I mean, 
as a, as a correction officer, you know, like, what's the, you know, did you, how you feel about that? You know, do you think that the inmates are really actually getting help or they were just giving them pills and just... Well, you know, you know, it's, it's hard to say, but as just looking everything, mm -hmm. you know, um, going back and, and analyzing, yeah. there's some that reform and a lot of them go back to the same thing because now I'm looking at it as a state officer, a correction officer point of view in the city and also as a police officer. So I'm looking at it's a revolving door because you're there. What I saw inmates that left Rikers Island and were gone. They were there for three weeks, gone. Four weeks later, they back. And I seen some guys leave today and they're here tomorrow or on my next tour. Mm. It was a revolving door. And it, they, the system got to be a better system. You know, they, they got to come and, and, and either they're going to keep these guys there, try to reform them, or, or just if you let them out the next day, they're going to come back in because they're going to say like, hey, you know what? I ain't doing no time. You know, this is like wreck for them. Some of them, this is like wreck. They're there, Rikers Island. They, they don't want to go home or they go home. They want to come back. Because they right. got a better life in Rikers Island than actually, you know, being home. Some of these guys are, are, are living in shelters. They're not really uh, 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 have a home. Mm. And they have a better life in, in Rikers Island, you know. But, um, yeah, sure. I mean, Rikers Island is, 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 is to this day, you know, I, I, I listen to the news. <laughs> I got friends that are correctional officers. Mm -hmm. I got relatives that, you know, that um, actually are officers now. Mm. Um, the reason why I say that is because not only that, and during my stay in, in, for those two years in Rikers Island, I actually did almost like almost three, you gotta okay. say. Um, my uncle was there as an inmate at the same time. My two cousins, they were both brothers, they were there at the same Rikers time, Island. Rikers Island. Then, to top all those three, my father came back for a new case in Rikers Island. I have my whole family there. It was like a family reunion. Mm -mm -mm. So, how you dealt with that well, shit? Though? You know, like, was I, I you dealt as, with it. As state, a correctional, yeah, you 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 being placed in a situation it, where you like you giving the authorities and all that. Like, exactly. It, 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 and but this situation was kind of different mm. because. My aunt was calling me. Hey, you know, can you take my son this, my son that, cigarettes, was, this and that? I was like, hold up. Let's stop it here. I would never do that. I'm not bringing them nothing. You know, I said, if anything, um, I will put money in the commissary because, you know, I love my cousins. I love my aunt and everything, but I wasn't going to be that individual to get because once you do it, you get, they're going to keep doing it, and you're going to put yourself in that predicament. Mm. And then your cousins are going to put you in that situation. Mm. I let them know. You know, I let them know. Dude, you have one choice. Mm. Not two, but you have one choice. Keep your mouth shut. Don't say you're related to me. Mm. Because they're going to transfer you. They ain't going to transfer me out. Because Rikers Island, in Rikers Island, I was in the worst jail there was in Rikers Island. Unless they're going to send me to a different borough. Right. So I did that to my cousins. But what I did do was I said, the only thing I can do for you is I get everybody here a job. Mm. And that's what I did. I had my uncle and one of my cousins working in my tour. Mm. Uh, I had my father when he first came in for two days to work on my tour. I got a call on account. And you see... My father lining up, and that 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 kind of like messed with my head. Like mm. I remember my dad at the little time that he was around it must us. Must have been tough, man. Yeah, I, I it, it was like it just came back. I mean, I remember when my dad was like, "Hey, come here," you know, and you come. You're a kid, yeah. You know, and that's my dad. You know, so it was one of those things. And then I that's saw dad. saying, that's "Yo, dad. on the count," you know. Yeah. I got to tell my dad now, get on the count, stop talking, shut up. Yeah. You know, 
You're trying to take count. And I'm like, holy shit. What the fuck? This is like the worst punishment mm -hmm. on his end. Mm -hmm. Like, he got to listen to his son now. You know, so it was a bad situation. It was uncomfortable for you, too. It, it was very uncomfortable. So mm -hmm. what I did, I had my, my, uh, my next tour buddy. I told him, listen, this is my dad, but he's my uncle. Get it? So he kept it. He said, I'm going to take care of him. And he took care of my dad. You know, he got him a, a good post in there. You know, my father was at the time, you know, he's a little old time or what they call old time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because he'd been in the system a long time. But one day when I went to pick up my workers at the mess hall, my dad was there because they're all in the same house. All the workers in the kitchen, the mess hall, they all work in the same dorm. And we had dorms, 50 inmates and yeah. two officers. But that was the, the mess hall crew. Okay. So I used to go there and pick them up. Mm -hmm. And they line up, and then I, you know, they already, they already knew that you can't be talking, you can't be all over the place, you gotta stay following each other, march all the way down to the mess hall. Mm -hmm. So um, they had, they knew the routine, they didn't give me a hard time. But it became a circus. Mm -hmm. Because at times when I had to be stuck and they didn't have no room for me to work in the mess hall, the captain was nice enough to put me where all my workers are at. Okay. In the module, where they all sleep. So during that time, I was there. Now you got some of the workers that work for other mess hall officers. So they want to challenge you. So they were trying to give me a hard time. And I'm like, I am not get my hands dirty. Mm. You know? What happens? My cousins, they saw that. So they were saying, what time are you going to lunch? And I was like, what do you mean? What time are you going to lunch? I said, you know, 1300 hours, which is 1 o'clock. You know, he goes, oh, okay. No, nah, no, nothing. When I came back from lunch, they packed them up. They bagged them up. Hmm. They you gave them a beat down and let them know that you don't give me a hard time. That's Rikers Island for you. That's Rikers Island for you. Mm. My uncle didn't have to say anything because I saw him try to give you a hard time. My cousin never said nothing. My dad never saw, you know, like one of those things. Right. But I knew what they were doing. So, you know, that made my job easier. I never asked for it. Mm. But they, they, you know, they're like, why are you giving Officer Mason that a hard time? You know what I mean? Right. So it was one of those things. And, you know, I, I did the right thing as, as far as, you know, keeping them with jobs. Right. But you get tested. Like, my, my cousin didn't care. You know, oh, do me a favor. Can you? I said, no, my man. I'm not doing you no favors. I said, as far as keeping you here so you can work, that's a favor. I never bought nothing in. And during that time in Rikers Island, there was, I think it was like four officers got arrested for bringing guns. Guns. So it was one of those things. And I, I can see how some correctional officers get caught up. Mm. They get caught up. Easy to get caught up. Oh, yeah. You know, they, yeah. you know they, they offer them money, and they don't give the money on like a hand-to-hand -hand thing. They'll call their relatives to meet the officer outside, you mm. know, in a parking lot or more or something mm. like that. Okay. And that's how that transaction went So through. safe to say... Prison reform is really needed. Absolutely. Because, I mean, because it's a lot of corruption as far as in every way. You've, oh, seen, the, you've seen a lot of corruption, right? Oh, yeah. They're, through officers themselves, yeah, you I'm know, saying. I mean, state, city, yeah. you know, and no matter where you work, you know, and no matter what type of job you have, mm. you got corruption all over. You got discrimination all over, you know, but as far as a program to reform, yes. like, for example, you. The king of, uh, of Rikers Island. Mm -hmm. That's all you hear, Pistol Pete and Rikers Island. Pistol Pete and Rikers Island. You know, even when I was a cop, you know, everybody knew Pistol Pete. Uh, uh, in, in corrections, there's a lot of known individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, my brother worked with, um, in his facility, he worked with, with, uh, with Dice, Boxing Dice. Mm -hmm. 
He was with he was my seal too. And no in the north facility. Your, your brother was my seal. Oh, look at that. So it's it's one of those things, you know, and you know, the, the you know, you guys are individuals that are more highlight, mm -hmm. you know, when you guys are are are, are in in the institution. Mm -hmm. You know, um so, you know, you you get people coming in and going out as correction officers, you're classified because we used to look at the card. Mm. We know who was a high profile individual. Right, right. You know, um, I didn't like to profile, but I used to profile and keep it to myself. Like, mm. this is a guy that you got to have double time and double thinking. You know what I mean? Because of the type of individual he is. Mm. You know what I mean? So you got to handle the situation in a different way. Mm. You know what I mean? I got you. But you do your job. Right. You know what I mean? And, like, we never had any runnings because, mm -hmm. personally, I didn't know you then. Right. You know, but um, but your name was was yeah. was there, and you hear it from other inmates. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was one of those things that, you know, me now looking back, you were reformed. Mm -hmm. You still pissed your Pete. Mm -hmm. You know what Facts. I mean? Mm -hmm. But you got reformed. Mm -hmm. And the this program that you're doing is awesome. Thank you, know? you man. I appreciate it. No, I, I I tell you, it's it's you're not you're not here to say war stories. Mm -hmm. You know, um, for example, you, you did what, 18 years? 17. 17 years. You know, it was me on a short time, eight hours, and getting stuff at 16. I was complaining, I wanted to get out of there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So now, you know, um, my brother did a, a, a full 20 years, mm -hmm. you know, in Rikers Island. I would have did it if I didn't have another job, right. but I'm glad that I did move to the, to, to the police department. Okay. You know what I mean? I'd rather put them in than, yeah. well, you know, babysit something. And deal with it. All yeah, all because it, it was less of a headache. You mm -hmm. got your freedom. You're out there. It's not easy working in, in jail. It's not. There's no one that can tell me that it's an easy job. And if you think you're going to go there just to do eight hours, you're mistaken, you know. I want to thank you, Alex, man. It was great having you, man. I appreciate having you, man. It was a great interview. I want you to, uh, we'll just ask you one more thing. What would you say for all those young guys out there that, you know, they they thinking that, you know, Ragnar Zalo and being in jail and, you know, and being down with gangs and everything that you see now? Because I ain't got to tell you. Yeah. What, you what, what kind of message would you give these guys? Man, I all I can say is jail is not a nice place to be in. I mean, I don't care how many guys you think you know there, mm -hmm. uh, how tough you think you are, because everybody there is a tough guy. You know, when you think one guy is more dangerous than the other one, the guy that's real quiet, he's more dangerous. It surprised you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I and I tell you, um, I don't know how you guys did it. You know, 18 years. Uh, I think Dice did like 26 years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, I know he got a lot of stories, man. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's some tough shit. You know, um, you did uh, 17 years. I mean, more than a year. I think more than a day for you guys out there. I think that's a learning experience. Mm -hmm. And I think programs like this really got to touch. Absolutely. Um, because all those new cats out there that want to go that route, they're mistaken. And I'm glad I did what I did. I was given a choice. I, I was one of those cats thinking I want to be a tough guy and a gangster. When that cop sat me down and ate me, a, 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 bought me a pizza and an icy and gave me a story, I became who I am now, mm. and I'm glad I never had due time. You know, because it's not a nice place. Alex, it was my a man, pleasure, man. Thank I'll you, my brother. Appreciate you, having you, man. Dog in the yard. We already know it's your boy Pistol, man. And you already know we gonna leave it like that, man. Your boy Pistol, Alex. Thank you, my brother. Appreciate having you, man. Dog in the yard. You already know. Welcome back, man. All blessings, man. First and foremost, I want to thank everybody for supporting that season four, for supporting Dog in the Yard, period. You know what I'm saying? And everything that I do, I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that last episode with Alex Masonette. You know what I'm saying? Alex Masonette, like I said before, he held shit down. He held a lot of rappers down. You know what I'm saying? He helped me out in situations. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to lie to you guys. 
He was there for me in situations, and I thought his uh, uh, his story was amazing. You know how he was a correction officer; he had to deal with the facts of his.